Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming, and do you recognize that orbit on the screen? If you do, you know that's uh, got to be Sedna, a possible dwarf planet in the detached region of the solar system. It has the farthest aphelion of any known dwarf planet. It's not technic it's not recognized yet, but it is most likely one. And uh, I was able to add it to real solar system, and I sent a mission there, so let's get started there. So, um, as you can see, I'm using my hydrogen-powered Vasimir engine ship again from when I before I used Realism Overhaul. That is because I have temporarily disabled Realism Overhaul. I will be turning it back on soon, but I just wanted to send a mission here with the simple electric engines. So this isn't entirely realistic, just because um, these engines provide more thrust than they should, and I didn't feel like waiting days. If you were an actual mission, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to wait days. But anyway, so uh, Sedna. You'll see it on the screen. Uh, I'm using Space Engine Textures. That's an awesome simulation, by the way. Space Engine, you should get it. Space Engine Textures, a real solar system mod, using some... Uh, got some ideas from the bonus planet pack, which adds Neptune and Triton. I'm currently having issues where if I... For, for example, I add Sedna. Sedna based off Elu as the template. That means that the Europa, which is also based off Elu, gets Sedna's texture, and I need to fix that. So it's going to be difficult for me to add planets, but the great thing is I can still add these planets. Like, we can go to Haumea, Pluto's moons, Eris, Dysnomia, Ceres, Vesta, all these all these places I now have access to, which is amazing. So let's talk about Sedna. Sedna is, again, most likely a dwarf planet, uh, discovered by the same guy who discovered Eris, the largest uh, dwarf planet. It is outside the Kuiper Belt. It's perihelion is extremely far from the sun and its orbit is extremely elongated with a 10,000 over 10,000 year uh, orbital year so a year on Sedna is 10,000 years Sedna is one of the reddest objects in the solar system after Mars that's why you see it so red and obviously we don't actually know what it looks like perfectly but we do have the color space engine added the color thankfully and uh, we get this beautiful texture Sedna is not considered part of the Kuiper Belt because it's actually out of the Kuiper Belt. It's actually considered part of the Inner Oort Cloud, which is the proposed area for where the uh, comets come from. But, interestingly, you, the astronomers were wondering how Sedna got this orbit, and uh, there's nothing to boost it to that elongation. Uh, Neptune couldn't have done it. It's too far. There's many theories. The most intriguing one, and it's probably not very likely, is that there's another planet out there, like a rocky planet that couldn't be detected because it's uh, not very bright. That would be awesome, but there's no proof for that. And uh, the reason that they th they think um, that could possibly be the case, just maybe, is because originally they thought, well, because of because Sedna's peri perihelion is so so far from the sun, and it's Ap uh, apohelion, ap apoapsis is so ridiculously far, it's going to be spending the vast majority of its time so far away that you could not observe it from Earth. So that means that it had to be discovered in a short window, and if it wasn't, then you couldn't see it. They figured, well, this is either this either means that there's tons of these Sedna-like objects out there, and we just happened to find one, or it was a fluke. But then they found another one. In 2012, announced in 2014, it hasn't been named yet, it opened a new class of ca uh, objects called Sednoids because it, is, it has a similar orbit to Sedna. Its perihelion is farther from the sun, but its farthest point is closer. It's a little different, but the inclination is similar. So they figured, now it can't be a fluke, we found two of them. So they, 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 there has to be a reason for these being here. And again, there's multiple proposals. The most interesting is that there could be another planet. That would be cool, but uh, who knows. So, uh, back to KSB. The lander we're using is a lunar module from FASA with some little small landing legs and just a procedural tank, some RTGs, SAS, and a Rock Max engine. And uh, we're landing on the red hills of Sedna. Sedna is uh, the journey. So, it only takes a little bit more delta V than getting to Pluto, which you can see in my other video. But it's because uh, of the Oberth effect. But your uh, travel time becomes significantly longer. And I learned one thing about KSB. You can't get higher than 68 Earth years 
three hours and fourteen minutes and eight seconds. You cannot go higher than that. And I mean, well, you, you can, but I won't track it. My mission time shows that exact time. My time to encounter showed that exact time. That is the maximum it will show. And the actual journey, I tracked it by uh, setting it to calendar mode on Kerbal Alarm Clock. So we start the uh, Jebediah and Bill departed from Earth on their heavy launcher in 1951. They arrived at about 2130. So, an extremely long journey. 230 years in space. Not 230, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bad math. 180. Anyway, very long journey. Um, a gravity assist could of course speed this up, and I need to figure out how to get that if I ever want to do this in realism overhaul, because it required an large amount of delta V. Basically, you couldn't do it by burning in Earth's orbit because it would uh, drop the periops below the atmosphere before you could get to Sedna. And uh, so I had to eject from Earth and then change the inclination and then just do a home and transfer. It was difficult. Um, so lots of delta V, very remote place. If you were to stand here in real life on the surface of Sedna, the sun would just look like an extremely bright star like the other stars in the sky. Of course it would be very, very bright, but it wouldn't look like a disk like we can see it from Earth. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this mission to this very remote planet, dwarf planet. And uh, yeah, if you, I hope you will subscribe because that will help me create more in the future. And uh, now that I can create my own planets, we can go many places. Ceres, Vesta, Makemake, Haumea, Eris, the moons, Pluto's moons, Charon. There's a lot of places to go. So yeah, subscribe very much helps the channel. Comment if you have any suggestions. All the sources for the mods that I used to create these planets or that helped me create these planets will be listed in the description because I need to give credit to who deserves credit. And thank you again. See you next time.